Are we here? How are we looking there, guys? Are we live? We're just waiting to see if uh, it's going to come up on the screen, guys. How are you? Hope you're really well. I'm awesome. Old mate here is actually Ronnie, a good friend of mine, aka Retro. He's part of the Australian Anti-Ice Campaign team and uh, blessed to have him on the couch today. He's got a lot to share about methamphetamine and recovery. Uh, like I said in my promo video, I'm going to stop there. Are we actually live? Is it working? Yeah, it's all good? Because I can't see it up there, so... Yeah, you are. You are. It's all good? Yeah. Okay, I'm sweet. Like I shared on the promo video a couple of days ago, I'm really interested. Um, Retro's got how many years clean, is it? 15. It's got 15 years clean under his belt, which for me is really impressive. Um, I'm close to three years, so uh, to speak to someone that's uh, been through 15 years of recovery and abstained for that long uh, is awesome. A lot of wisdom to share with, um, with us. Just two seconds, guys, we're getting some stuff organised. Yeah. Do a shout out, guys, if this is uh, live stream now. If you can shout out to us, that'll be great. Santana, if you're watching, give us a thumbs up. Give a thumbs up. Oh, and by the way, um, I totally agree. Such an awesome show last week. I totally agree with, with all the. Um, all the comments are referring to Santana's bravery and her courage and what an inspiration she is. And it was awesome to have her on the show. Uh, she's really going to be leading, leading the charge with the educational program in the schools. Um, and being so young, man, I, it's just uh, she can really build a rapport with the kids and, you know, touch a lot of lives. Yeah, awesome young lady. Are we good? And to me who's watching the live video, swipe if the Caesar is live. So guys, we've got the Gold Coast show mm -hmm. as well. Is it cool to keep going? Is that filming? Yeah. Is it? It's just yeah. not coming through there. It was initially. Yeah. It's not at all. It was. That's because you're on that phone, is it, on mm. Jay, instead yeah. of this one? Yeah, I'm trying to get that on there. Yeah. But you are actually okay. live. So yeah, have, all good. You have okay, guys. Natasha. Natasha. Hey, thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in. Guys, we've got the Gold Coast show uh, starting tomorrow. We've got a stall down there. Uh, so come down and say hello. Meet the team on the ground. Uh, if you want any information about AIC, what we're all about, what we're doing, uh, the, the educational program, some of the courses you can do. If you just want to come down and say hello, feel free. I mentioned last week, volunteers. We are in need of volunteers. AAIC is growing all the time. Um, we're getting new people all the time and it's expanding all the time. So we, we need people to help put their hands up. It doesn't matter your skill set, guys. We'll find something for you to do. Um, Ask Natasha. Ask Natasha. Natasha. How to get on live. Natasha, is the live stream, if you're out there, Natasha, is, is the live stream just coming straight onto Facebook or do you need to click into something for it to be live? If you could type up your answer. We've just got a new, guys, we've got a, a new setup tonight, which is amazing. It is more like Hollywood than last week, but we're just getting used to it, uh, working out how to set it all up. So bear with us. Makeup. Yeah, makeup. <laughs> we need some makeup, yeah. <laughs> Straight up. Hey? She said straight up. Oh, straight up. Yeah, so it's just as soon as you go live, you should be able to see it. Awesome. So we just need another 3,700 people to join us. We'll be good. Hey, I found sight, guys. Hey, Natasha, straight up. Awesome. Hey, Jim. Jim. Good to see Jim. you, brother. Yeah, yeah, Jim. Lots of cool comments last week, yeah. Jim. Awesome. Good to see you. Big yeah. fella. Very yeah. nice. Share it, guys. If you, got, if you can see anyone live on Facebook, Maybe give them a quick uh, PM and invite them to tune in uh, and watch the show or share the page. Yeah, you know it, Jim. Straight up. Do. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is a new handshake. Show me, Jim. Lover, son, holy ghost. I love it. I love it. 
Guys, uh, so Gold Coast Show, definitely go and check that out. Um, a lot of cool people there, and um, yeah, you can find out everything you want to know down there. Um, I think it's Sharon running the store. Yeah. Yeah, so just ask for Sharon, she's sort of leading it down there. Guys, we've also. The barbecue. The oh, barbecue. I don't. At Bunnings on Saturday, that's right. I saw barbecue on Bunnings. Uh, it's the one in um, off Brisbane Road, is it? Yeah. Off Brisbane Road. Olsen. Olsen Avenue. So the Bunnings are Olsen Avenue. Uh, we're doing a stall there with the sausage sizzle. Uh, so come down, say hello. All donations going back into AAIC. Get there quickly because if I'm there, I'll eat it all. <laughs> mm. So yeah, come down, guys. We've got lots of cool things happening. So if you want to meet everyone, uh, come and check it out. Had a few comments. Is that a question? Had, had a few comments about the shirts, guys. Got um, people asking where you can get them. And very soon, guys, they're going to be available online with all proceeds going into the educational program uh, so we can get the kids educated. And, I mean, that's why I'm here, personally, is to educate the youth. Um, Retro is one of our presenters as well, so... You know, that's, what, that's why I'm here. I really want to educate the youth. I feel it's a disservice, like I've said, heaps of times for yeah. us to send our kids out into the world these days without knowledge about this drug. Absolutely. Absolutely. Prevention is always better than the cure. What we've seen. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Like get in there early. That's, that's where you've got to get them, before they start. Yeah, exactly right. So Remember, guys, the stats in 2015 from the National Task Force, they say that 27 youth a day picking up the drug and only 2% are uh, getting clean once addicted to ice. Crazy figures. Um, so the shirts, guys, we've got some shirts here. You would have seen the one last week. Got a lot more coming. We're going to have a, an online store soon where you can purchase these shirts. And, um, yeah, like I said, donations or pr proceeds are going back into AIC to educate our kids. So any more logistical stuff, guys? No, that's cool. Okay, my friend Retro here has been through a full-on journey um, using illicit drugs from a really young age. How, how um, young were you when you started using just drugs generally? Maybe? Well, do you want me to give um, the trigger point why it started? or Yeah, we what? can get into that. Like okay. how, how old were you when you started and yeah, why? Well, I was roughly around the age of 14. I was still at school. Um, I mean, life was going pretty good for me. Uh, my dad was a plasterer, I had a stay-at-home mum. I had a fairly uneventful uh, teenage life until one weekend it was shattered. By, um, I got interfered with by a, a personal family friend, and, or a trusted family friend, and that just left me uh, shattered, um, guilt-ridden, and because I had no, no support, it made it even worse, so it just, I, I was honestly, I felt depressed and um, tormented by that experience. Can you tell me, man, just, I'm, I'm going to dive in a little yeah, bit, sure. man, because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really yeah. interested to know, and this is going to help a lot of people out there. Before that event, man, to tell us how you, what sort of person were you going up? Well, I was, I was, I was easy come, easy go, you know, I was, yeah. I was, Pretty sporty, yeah. and um, yeah, I was. I didn't have a. I didn't really have a care or worry in the world, you know. Yeah. And when that happened, um, something in, in me was it just it haunted me that experience. So shortly after that, I began to uh, experiment with alcohol and, and marijuana, and I found that this was uh, taking away that 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 emotional torment and guilt. Um, Shortly after that, and I mean, I, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the pleasure of it because it was switching off my personal pain. So it was like suppressing it more than taking it away. Absolutely, it was, it was suppressing. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was just switching off that personal pain, that that guilt. It was it was like a pressure cooker, but it was, it was yeah, it was sealing it. Um, but you know, with with the highs come the lows, obviously, and um, because of my continued prolonged use. Um, I felt that my life was, my life was, um, my behaviour was actually changing because firstly I was becoming sneaky to have to do this thing, mm -hmm. then it was costing me money obviously, yeah. and 
down and that's where the lying, stealing and cheating starts. And it just doesn't get any better, it only makes you feel worse. Still living at home there? Yeah, yeah. still at home. Um, and then, like I said, it's just one of those things um, because it wasn't dealt with at the, at the root, at the grassroots of it. Um, you know, try and make better, better um, decisions than I did. Pretty hard, man. At fourteen, I know, I know. You know, well, what, that's, what, what do you do? Yeah, it's, you know, like at fourteen years old, that's that's fine now. Mm. You know, with these years of hindsight, you know, and we can, I'm sure all of us who have lived had experiences, man. We go, well, I could have done things better. Pretty mm. hard at fourteen mm. to deal with that in any other way, really. Yeah. Um, you do have choices, guys, though, at any time. Yeah. Um, I always, I'm not sure about you, man, but you, you probably would touch on, when I'm talking to the kids, I always say, straight up, if you've got any issues, if there's anything going on at home or within yourself, find someone you can trust and talk to them about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Because otherwise, what happens, man, if yeah. you don't deal with it? You're looking for an escape. Yeah. yeah. And that only, it, it just puts you on that, that mouse wheel, which is just an endless cycle. You know, and look, you know, we've all got dreams. I mean, you know, what are yours? I mean, you know, for the younger youth, you know, they might want to be lawyers, doctors, girls, you know, they might want to be beauticians or models, mm. you know. Mm. And um, my, my dream was always to become a sailor. I joined the Navy, you know. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was, that, was my, that was my dream. And I did it. I joined up when I was uh, 16 and see life's made up of good choices and not so good choices and I made quite a few not so good choices while I was in there and um, three and a half years later five of us including myself six of us uh, we ended up getting drafted to the biggest ship in the Navy it's called citizenship and um, we got ousted, ousted with a snarler which was our services no longer required Wow. But, um, How did that feel, man? Like being that that was your dream, there was some distance from that first event, and I'm sure I'm sure it would have felt good mm. signing up to the navy and actually going out. How did that feel, man? No, absolutely. If that was your that dream, was, that was um, that was the rule. Not pride, as in you know, but I, I, I really felt proud to serve my country. Yeah, not. You know, man. but when that happened, um, again, guilt and shame was not just upon me now, it was on my family as well. Um, that, you know, because my parents were proud of me, you know. And that was just a, a little kick in the guts, you could say. But uh, me and my smart wisdom said, well look, you know, the damage is done now, why stop? Yeah. I mean, don't, don't have that attitude, you know. I mean, there's, there's always a better way. But um, it didn't take long and I was never one to do things by half measures. I was always looking for something better and, and um, a better rush and stuff like this. So I started on the road, long spiral road downhill. Uh, well, How old were you when you were discharged, man? Uh, nine and a half, twenty. So is that, mate, that's a lot. You've already crammed mm. in a lot in that six years or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, man. What yeah. happened after the discharge? What so um, yeah. Shortly after that, I, I, it's always peer pressure. It's your mates. Things just don't happen by accident. I mean, there's always a reason, and um, and it's picking your friends. Pick your friends, you know. Yeah. Um, look, I started using speed, um, cocaine, LSD was a, a a weekly event for me as well. And that's and then I even I even uh, got got into the heroin. Not heavy, but I mean, I I was one that I'd try anything and. But just don't do it. Make smarter choices than me. Hey, and can I ask you, man, how yeah. were you using the heroin? Um, smoking it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, at 21, I copped my first DUI charge. Um, lost my license for three months and three hundred dollars. And money's money. I mean, you know, it just doesn't grow on trees unless, you know. So. Um, about six months later, or just 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 after after this, uh, losing the license, there's a new devil introduced to me, and it was called Crank. And I used to knock around certain clubs, and I'd actually um, the next 
been exposed to this to try it, and it they give me a, a, a really a really high high, and, I, and, the, and the thing is, when I tried that, the percentage percentage wise, as far as purity, was only like fifteen to seventeen percent. Yeah. I mean, yep. these days, you know, you're looking at seventy five to eighty percent plus. So this is ice you're talking about? Well, it, it crank was was another known for for methamphetamine. Okay, sure. So. Um, I, about six months after this use, I actually um, went to went down the pub with our, our mates and yep. got into a, a fairly vicious fight down there. So using for six months, man, yeah, on the yeah, crank. Yeah. So were you sort of once you had the crank, the ice, mm -hmm. um, was that because it gave you that extreme high? Were you like, well, this is what I want? Absolutely. Did that would did that suck you in? Did the other drugs fall to the wayside? Well, I was I was probably using a little bit. I mean, um, I was still still smoking dope, and and um, but like probably trips to the LSDs. That was that was occasionally as well, but it was mainly mainly speed was my my drug of choice. But when I when I got onto this yep. crank or, or meth, yep. Um, it's How just, are you using it then, man? Uh, I'm smoking. Yep. So you eat out of a glass pipe. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And. Uh, we went down, went down the pub, and push come to shove down there, and end up getting into a fairly vicious fight down there. How did that come about, man? Uh, what state were you in? Well, was I, was, I was pretty scattered. Yeah. Okay. I was pretty scattered. Can you explain scattered for the people okay. out there? Um, I'll call it a psychotic episode. Okay. Um, I just. It was like I said. It was push come to shove, and then I just saw red, and then I just I just went in, and it ended up uh, five cops come. I was restrained with two sets of handcuffs. Wow. Um, this is in Sydney. Now I can guarantee if it was in Melbourne, they would have shot me. Wow. Because the cops at that stage were, were pretty trigger happy. So. Wow. End, result, sets, man. end result. End result was um, five counts of malicious injury, uh, ten grand's worth of damages. So this thing went to Supreme Court in Sydney, and it went for a, a period of about three and a half years. And over that period, uh, I was still using, and I was entertaining some very dark thoughts of suicide, and and just and we all know look, suicide is, is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. So you know, it, this stuff messes with your head. You know, you know, you think you're in control of it, but it has control of you. Okay, and there's only the percentage-wise. Is only two percent of people can beat this addiction. This is like this is like the burger with the worst. There's no picking and choosing with this. You're going to get the highest high you'll ever get, but this is going to take you to the lowest low. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter how much you use. In the end, you lose. This takes control of you. Mm. Doesn't so discriminate. It doesn't discriminate. Doesn't and, matter your uh, background. Doesn't matter your age, race, religion. Any. If you use meth, it'll take everything. Absolutely. From you. It'll it'll rob you. So, not just your physical possessions either, man. It takes you away, it's, doesn't it? It's so. your mind, your soul. It's it's a, it's like a demon. Yeah. This thing just takes over you. Can I ask you one thing, man? Uh, what caught me when you were saying that is, um, it went on for three years. This court case, and you were still using for that three and a half years. Uh, three yeah. and a half years. So, that event wasn't enough to snap you out of it. That. That fight and that. I I needed this. I needed this drug. So, yeah. so you say for that first six months you were using, how much were you using each day? Did it become daily? It was. Yeah, there'd, there'd be times that it'd be daily. I try and I try and string it out a little bit. Obviously, um, I didn't I didn't have to, you know, honestly I didn't have to steal to uh, support this habit. Um, but the end result was I lost my my marriage, two kids, um, value-wise, and two houses, and I lost my my dream my dream career, and I nearly lost my life. Wow! Yeah, it stripped everything, eh? Mm -hmm. so tell us about the the court the court case, man. Was it what were the feelings around that? Like, um, Oh, you were still high using up to the court case. Did you take a break when well, it was coming to crunch? I was, I was, 
I was uh, trying to minimise my my usage. Yep. Like I said, I was I was probably using, so I was trying to trying to counteract that with with the dope. Yeah. And like I said, it's those it's those dark thoughts that you get. You know, it's it's just it just takes you to a place you don't really want to go to. Look, uh, people out there, yeah. a lot of people out there, because I mean, this people will be watching this years to come. Even this is going to be on the Facebook page. Yeah. A lot of people out there won't understand those dark thoughts, you know. Yeah. We, I do. Yeah. Um, share with the people out there how dark okay. were those thoughts? What play? What place were okay. you in? If you, if if you're just straight, if you're normal, a normal person, and you have, have been sleep deprivated for two to three days, you start to get the wildest, scariest thoughts that are just in your mind. Well, you just go and multiply that. By 20, 50 times. It's just, it just, it's a nightmare. It is a living nightmare. And all you want to do is you just want to get on. You just want to, you just, you, your brain's just telling you, you just need this. You just need this. And, um, you know, I was still functioning. See, for, for an ice addict, uh, we'll just say it's like oxygen. Oxygen, you need to breathe. When you're using, you need this just to be normal. Okay, you just need it to be normal. And, you know, I, I tried to hide it pretty good. Um, this is probably be a shock to a few people, but, you know, I got to a point where I was at low. I was at the lowest point in my life where I just, I just cried out and I said, well, if there's a God out there, I said, I need help. I can't do this alone. And the funny thing was, a guy invited me along to church a couple of days later, and that was a turning point in my life. Um, it literally was because you know I made a commitment to to Christ. I mean, this is this is my personal faith, and to do I just couldn't do this on my own strength. I, I just needed I just needed that 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 hand up that hand up, and I found that. Um, I just, I just begin to change. The, the cravings were, were virtually. I, when I was in church and, and I went through sinner's prayer, I mean, I was, I was out of it. I was off my face. I went through it and I was instantly straight. And I thought, wow, what's happening here? This is, this is spooky, yeah. you know. And you know, and because of all the guilt and, and, and everything that I was carrying from this court case, it was dead set like a, a wet blanket just dropped off my back. Yeah, and and I was just standing there normal, but it just felt like my arms just shot up, and it just felt like um, handcuffs just breaking apart, you know. And I just wow, you know. So I thought, okay, the, the message was, you know, become a new person in Christ. All things past are forgiven and forgotten. And man, I got a, I got a second, second. Bite of the apple, second chance at life. Mm. And a lot of, so many people out there don't get a second chance with this. A, right. a lot of people, as soon as they use, they'll take it to the grave. Mm -hmm. I know we keep sharing this mm -hmm. two percent mm -hmm. um, stat. It's very true. Only two percent get it. So ninety-eight people yeah. out of a hundred don't get off ice. That's right. And the AIS, AIC have a real passion to change that stat, mm -hmm. guys. Yeah. Prevention is the key. Yeah. And we need to get into the schools and educate our kids. And miracles do happen, you know. Yeah. We're in your darkest hour, miracles do happen. It might not be Christ that you find, but miracles happen in your Absolutely. darkest hour. When you're yeah. really ready in your heart, singing out for change, miracles do happen. Amaz amazing, amazing. I, I know, I know, I know people that have had strokes and heart attacks and, and, and even died from it, you know. But I was just so overjoyed. I, I rang up my Queen's Council. Uh, you know, I was happy to happy to share to him. You know, and I said, "No, I've become a Christian," and he was all, "Well, good choice." You know, <laughs> you, you've seen the light. Better than Craig? <laughs> Mate, I'm telling you, there's, there was Sorry. just there was just no comparison. And he said, um, "You know, but you do realise you've got about three phone books of dossiers," and he was just reiterating because of my um, criminal activities that. It wasn't a matter of me. I was I was going to jail, right? They'd already had a, a, a name and a, a number over his cell, 
out at Long Bay Jail. He said, it's only up to me to find out when and for how long. Okay? This is serious stuff. Yeah. You know? yeah. And he said, but I've got this letter delivered to me this morning on my desk with your name on it from the Attorney General's office. And I said, okay, well, what did it say? He said, I haven't opened it yet. So I said, okay. So I'm sitting there listening as he's... On the phone. As he's fumbling <laughs> through the... the, the and he's reading away in silence. And he said, I don't believe what I'm reading. And he said, all your charges have been quashed and thrown out of court. And that, my friends, is divine intervention, set free in mind, body and spirit, and free from drug addiction. So, I mean, you know, that's a living testimony I can, I can give to somebody. Yep. Sure. There, is, there is hope out there. You know? Absolutely, there and is if, hope. And if you need to talk Absolutely. to somebody, please, do what you can do, get on the phone, talk to somebody, get in contact with AAIC. Mm. We've got, we got numbers that we can refer you to. Um, there's, you know, for, for detox and, and, you know, there's, there's, always, there's always hope. There's always hope. So just don't give up. Don't yeah. give up. You know? Very true, man. Reach out, guys. If you're in a, if you're in a situation, reach out. Uh, we've got people trained here that can do brief intervention. So if you're in, a, if you're in addiction and you're like, I'm over this, you know, so many... Uh, Absolutely. My experience is you can't force someone into recovery. No. Those people that get uh, forced to go to rehab because of a court matter or forced by the family, it can work. Mm -hmm. Yet the percentage of those people I've found like often relapse because it hasn't Absolutely. come from within them. Mm -hmm. So or they're doing it for for the wrong reason. Yeah, to get their time yeah. off their jail or whatever it is. You know, it's something's got to change within. And yeah. I, I sort of I say it like you, you've got to get over it. And mm -hmm. I mean, you got to you got to want to get off it. You've got to mm. want to get right. off it, otherwise nothing's going to change. So you're leading yeah. a horse to water and you can't make him drink it, but... No, know. but there is other options out there, guys, and um, where was it going with that? Yeah, we've got people who do brief interventions, guys, so if you are over it, then feel free to give us a call, and we can send some people out there to have a chat to you about your options, where to go from there. We are always there on the phone, you can mm. always get in touch with us, so... You don't have to do it alone. Mm. It's a nightmare to live in. If you haven't used it, uh, I would suggest you don't. Um, family support number, guys, for those ones who have a loved one dealing with ad uh, in addiction, who want some support or need to know more about what they're going through. Family support and brief for brief interventions as well. 0481 that's Brooke um, and, or Jeanette. Jeanette uh, is running that now, lovely lady. So get in touch, guys. Um, yeah, what else, man? Tell, what, tell us about your recovery. Like, I'm so impressed. 15 years, we got 15 years here, um, clean. And, you know, I'm coming up to three, man, and I'm off. Well done to have 15. That's a, real, a fantastic effort, man. Congratulations yeah. on that. Yeah. Can you share with the people out there who are fresh into recovery or even if they're a few years down the way, um, how you've managed to abstain? Have you had temptation along the way? Has it been an easy road? You know, Have you ever you know, been challenged and thought you might go back to it? Well, you know, there's been times where you have um, an ice-induced psychosis, if you want to call it that. I call it flashback. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it might be some place I might have visited. It might be a, a, something I... Uh, there's a certain smell or, mm. or music, and that'll that'll sort of take me back to, you know, I, I was using there or something like this, and sure, the temptation temptation's always there. It's always going to be there, you know. Um, it's not a, you know, we, we've still got a we've still got a free will to choose. Remember, good choices, not so good choices. Um, if you can get get into a um, a rehab. I didn't have to go for a rehab, and I'm thanking God for that because I was I was delivered from it. You know, not everybody gets that, but um, you know, if you if you get the opportunity and you can get yourself, you know, through detox and and, and into a rehab, there's obviously a, um, they they still work it on a 12 step 
mm. system. Yeah. You know, so you know, get yourself a sponsor and get some support around you. You know, that's that's you're not you're not meant to do it on your own. If you can do it, join the army. Join the AAIC army. You know. Absolutely. If you don't know what the army is, guys, go to the website, mm -hmm. um, the Australian Anti Ice Campaign .org .au. Join the army. That is a way that the community out there can assist AAIC, educate. Um, the youth, uh, like I said last week, we don't just uh, have the workshops for kids. It's also suitable for businesses, sporting clubs, um, you know, family groups, whatever. The workshop's tailor-made for, for whoever needs it. Um, also, we are non-for-profit, not government-funded, and we are a charity. Yay! We've got the charity so all, status. All two dollars and over, it's tax deductible. Yeah, that's right. And you know what? Two dollars counts, guys. Yeah. Um, it it's one dollar counts. No, you know, every dollar. Every, every, every one counts. One two bucks actually educates one kid. There you go. So there you go. So um, any concerned parents out there, or any any young young folk out there that have got friends that may, you know, be tempted to try this, please just. You know, you know, we. I won't say don't because you know if something's painted up, fresh paint, it says don't touch. The first thing we do, what do we do? Touch it to see if it's wet. A big message we've got at AAIC, which is where I think you're going with it, is not even once. That's it. Because it's not worth it, guys. Mm -hmm. You try this once, very likely to get addicted. And as you've heard from Retro's story and the stories last week. It, it takes you to a very dark place. I never hear a recovering addict, addict tell me a positive experience that they've had with methamphetamine. It's always, I've never been so low, violence, deceit. That's, that's what the world is. It lives, it breeds mm. on deceit. And there's no trust, no real friends no. in this game. So the army guys, you can make uh, monthly donations to that, one-time donations. Uh, we, we're also seeking sponsors. Uh, if you are a business and you would like to become a corporate sponsor, we've got a corporate packages for that. Um, also celebrities, if you are a celebrity or you know a celebrity that might want to come and do a short video and show their support for AAIC, that'd be fabulous. Awesome. That'd be awesome. Um, thank you for sharing Retro, mate. This video is going to be seen by a lot of people over a period of time. I know you've 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 shared, you know, not to do it and that. Is there anything um, that you'd like to say, you know, anything more to the to people out there that might come across this drug? Well, if you come across it, don't take it. Make a better choice. Save yourself the grief. Save yourself the heartache. It's not worth it. So. Thank you so much, man. Like, seriously, a blessing to have you on, man. To have that much time clean after everything you went through from such a young age, man. Really congratulations, man. I mean that, brother. There you go. I like that. I love it. We'll do it again. Father, son, holy ghost. Bless you all. Thanks, Bless man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thanks. So, guys, our message at AIC is not even once. And that's us. For this week, is there anything else? Next week, we've got... <laughs> so that's us for this week, guys. Next week, I've got George on the show. Yes. Uh, George is, like I said last week, a guru when it comes to recovery yeah, and absolutely. addiction. He runs a dual diagnosis course online for AAIC. And anger management. Yeah. Awesome guy. Mm. has is an absolute book of knowledge. And personally, I just... I love being in the space of someone who realises their passion at such a young age and has is many, many, many years into it. Um, you know, it's, I always learn something from George. He's such a blessing to be around. Question and answers, guys. Don't Retro, forget, don't you're forget, a blessing. Don't forget, we need, we need volunteers, guys. We need volunteers. Even it's only for an hour, even down at the uh, cook-up, they, they're doing volunteers for that as well, yeah. at the barbecues. Please, if you got just just an hour, two hours, it's muchly appreciated. Because, like we say, it's a, it's a non-paid thing. We're doing it for um, from for, for love. 
Absolutely. Okay. The more mer the more the merrier. Yeah, so absolutely. not even once, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Amazing show uh, next week. Yeah. Thanks to Retro again. Mm -hmm. Lots of love, people. Awesome show. Can't wait till next week. And thanks for Share me. the post. Thanks for having me, bro. All good. Pleasure. <laughs> See you guys. Cheers.